Now let's give it up for Mr. John Young, who's going to tell you how he got on the cover of RCRS magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, John Young! Hello everyone, I'm John Young with Remax Excellence Realty in Silver Spring, Maryland. I've been a license agent since 2004, serving the DC, Maryland and Northern Virginia areas. I've been a CRS agent since 2016. And believe it or not, even though I'm on stage giving this talk, this is my first time at Celebration. And so far I love it. It's awesome, it's a thrill to be here. So last night I was at the Voodoo Night Out and a lady came, I know, don't laugh. Lady came up to me and said, how is it that you wound up on the cover of, of the residential specialist? Is it because you did 100 referrals? And actually it wasn't. It was one very meaningful one. So if you remember, back in August and September, the RRC put out the call to everyone asking for their best or most interesting referral story. And I immediately thought of a referral back in February 2018 where an agent in Pennsylvania called me up and he said, John, I've read your reviews online. Some of your former clients said some very nice personal things about how you help them and that's exactly why I'm calling you because I have some clients I want to refer to you that need a personal touch. And I'll be honest, they're going to be challenging. So there's something you don't hear very often, right? Challenging with a referral. So my first thought was, all right, maybe the wife wants a house that looks like this but the husband's not quite on the same page and wants this. Or maybe the wife is dreaming of a yard that looks like this, but the husband would rather mow this. <laughs> so that is the Guinness Book of World Records, world's smallest front yard in Venice Beach, California. And I don't know if it's anybody's listing here, but I'm sorry if I stole the photo. So anyway, anyway he proceeded to tell me about his clients, Juliet and Corey, and he said they were living in a cramped two-bedroom condo, they were spending way too much in rent, and they were hoping for a new life in a new place. I said, great, I can't wait to meet them. And that's what I did, I drove out and met them a couple of days later at a coffee shop near where they lived. And when they walked in, I immediately realized why he had said they were challenging. Juliet had a severe physical disability. She was confined to a wheelchair, the result of juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, and scleroderma. Her partner, Corey, was on the autism spectrum. So we sat down, started going through their needs and wants, and it was an extensive list. Juliet needed to be near shopping and entertainment. It needed to be a place with disability access. She said it had to be a place where she felt Corey would feel safe and comfortable while she was at work. And then she threw in It'd be great if it had an elevator and a pool. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how familiar you are with the DC market, but what she was describing was a million dollar place, but their budget was about half that. So I was a bit distracted trying to think of places I could take them, neighborhoods and things that might work, when she said, there's one other thing I wanna ask you, and it's very important. And what she said to me next is something I will never forget. She put her hand on mine and looked right at me and said, are people like us a waste of time? Now, I don't know if you hearing me say that had the same effect that it had on me when I heard it. But in that moment, I was shocked, I was sad, and my knee-jerk reaction was to say, of course you're not a waste of time. Don't worry, I will find you a place. I will work hard for you. But I was having a hard time trying to process what I had just heard. Well, we shook hands and parted ways. And I walked back to my car and I cried. And one of the reasons I was so emotional about it was not only could I not understand how somebody could feel that way, but my wife and I have a nine-year-old daughter, Chloe. Chloe's got severe autism, she doesn't talk, she needs constant attention and supervision, and I was thinking to myself, one day when my wife and I aren't here for her, I hope somebody doesn't look at her and think she's a waste of time. 
Well, a few days later, we got started on our search. And I looked at everything. We, it was like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, though. We saw some places that had everything they wanted, but were too expensive. There were other places that didn't have enough of what they wanted. And quite frankly, there were some places they just didn't like. Eventually, we ran out of places to see. And that was about the time Juliet called me up and she said, you know, this is harder than I thought it was going to be, but we have a plan B. And I said, well, what is it? And she said, we're going to move back to Pennsylvania. And I said, I can't believe that. You would quit your job and move back to Pennsylvania? She said, nope. We're going to buy a house in Pennsylvania and I'll commute over two hours to work every day. And that's when I realized how desperate their situation was. So I doubled up my efforts. I called every agent that I knew asking if they had a pocket listing. We looked at expireds and withdrawns. I went and previewed places. We got to the end of the line again. We had run through everything. But like a lot of things in life, there was some divine intervention. My business partner Jeff called me up and he said, a condo just opened up in my building and they rarely come available. It was a three bedroom unit and I think it has a lot of what they're looking for. So we took them to see it and it did have everything they wanted. It had metro access. It was close to shopping and entertainment. It was a place that Corey, her partner, could feel comfortable and safe because they only lived right two blocks away currently. And it even had an elevator and a pool. There were a few challenges because there were some disability issues in the building, but I got involved and the management made some alterations for her, including adding a lift to the pool for her to get in and out of the pool. So their story has a happy ending. Here they are at settlement, Juliet in front, Corey wearing the hat in the back. And that's where their story ended, but it's not where mine ended. Because I started to think of another question that Juliet had asked me early in the process. She said, what does CRS mean after your name? And my partner, Jeff, was with us, and before I could answer, he jumped in and said, it's the PhD of real estate. Right, we all say that. It's catchy and it's cool, but it doesn't really sum up what we are and what we do for our clients as CRSs. Because CRS is a designation, but it's really a dedication to our clients. So I started to think of what does CRS mean to me? Now, I don't want to take anything away from Steve Sims' awesome presentation this morning. He had a different way to sum up the acronym, but it was, it was business related. Mine is more personal. It means to me compassion, responsibility, and service. We live in an age where it's very easy to be passionate about a lot of things, about our families, about our business, about politics. But I think it's easy to miss the humane quality of what we bring to our clients and the responsibility that we have to them and the trustworthiness that they put in us. And it goes without saying we're in a service industry. But in the case of Juliet and Corey, it was more than just providing service. It was, an, it was a cry for help. So when I meet all my clients, I always go over the NAR Equal Opportunity brochure with them and make sure they get it and they understand and read it. And there's a paragraph that I want to read to you and I want to read it verbatim. It says, the sale or purchase of a home is one of the most significant events that people will experience in their lifetimes. It is more than the simple purchase of housing for it includes the hopes, dreams, aspirations, and economic destiny of those involved. You know, I used to look at that and think, boy, that sounds important. But I didn't really understand how important it was until I worked with Juliet and Corey. So when I wound up on the cover of the magazine, the person in my immediate circle that it meant the most to was, of course, my mom. <laughs> my mother was a realtor for 30 years of her professional career and she was understandably proud. But I hope the people that it meant the most to were Juliet and Corey for the compassion, responsibility, and service that I provided to them and that I will provide to all of my clients moving forward because of them. And I hope that you will too because that's what makes us all rock stars. Thank you very much.
Thank you.